How effective are you as a writer? Today, I want to give you a couple of reasons as to why this is something I think it's well worth your time focusing on when you're in the saddle. And I'm also going to invite you to come over and join me for a walk each day for 21 days so we can slowly but surely improve your effectiveness. Get signed up for free for the 2024 brand new, all new Equestrian Fitness Challenge over at equestrianfitnesschallenge.com forward slash 24. And yeah, I'm going to bring you an oldie but a goodie episode to hopefully inspire you to take action. Okay, I'll see you at the end of the episode. Be good. Bye. If you had to put the amount of time you spend thinking about, planning and taking action on your horse's training and development side by side with the amount of time you spend thinking about, planning and taking action on your development as a rider, would they be equal? I'm going to say not. And I want to say today that that could be an issue. And if it's not yet, it will be down the line. Okay, let's dive into this. Hey there, and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I am a coach, an equestrian trainer. I help riders all over the world, both in person and online, to have better conversations with their horse, because I thoroughly believe that if we can get you right, we're already halfway there, hey? Okay, this week, I want to talk about training you. But you training you, not me training you, you training you, okay? And how much time you are putting into this. Because I can bet if you are ignoring this important element in the relationship between you and your horse, it is going to begin to hinder you both at a certain point. And a lot of riders are a little bit shocked by that. They're like, no, 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 I'm training my horse. Yes, but eventually you're going to become the sticking point. You're going to become the the cap on how far your horse can go in his training and development. And it's really important to understand that. Now, I do not believe just showing up for a weekly lesson is enough, if that's what your idea of training and developing yourself is, okay? It's not enough. Like, it's, it's ridiculous to even believe that that will be enough. It's not. Okay, it may be at the very beginning, but no, 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 no. If you're working with your horse and you are trying to achieve something with your horse, well, it makes sense that you should have an equal amount of kind of thought and an intention and purpose and focus put behind your development as well. And I really and truly feel that if you could take this month, The month that's coming now, February 2022. You know what? Whenever you listen to this, it makes no odds, okay? Pick a month and just really focus on that. It has the power to transform your riding from here to there, but also to transform the conversation between you and your horse. Remember, eventually your effectiveness as a rider is going to determine what your horse can actually do with all the training that you devote to him or her right now. And it is really, really important to consider that and to to keep remembering that. So let's start at the beginning here. Let's think about why do you ride? Now, for many people, they're like, oh, because it's freedom and it's harmony and it's buddy, buddy, ba. And it's that, I have no doubt in my mind, that's what it is, okay? But let's get really serious here. The reason you ride is because you have an idea in your head for what you would like to happen and you expect your horse to, well, toe the line and help you make that thing happen. And if it doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, as riders, we tend to kind of you know, double down on those types of things, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. But it is worth remembering that you are taking time out of your life, okay? The rest of your life, every time you mount up, and you're doing so to produce a certain outcome. So it kind of makes sense that if you could get really clear on (laughs) what you're saying, you'd have a better chance of producing the outcome, wouldn't you? And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your effectiveness as a rider. Because we can all ride. Everybody can ride. As one of my trainers used to say years ago, anybody can get made to be on the back of a horse. And that is true, okay? 
But I want you to consider how if you could become more effective as a rider, that could transform everything. Now, we can dive into what is effective. To me, effective is that your communication has clarity, okay? That when you ask a question, there's no doubt in your horse's mind as to what you asked and what you want him to do in response to that, okay? <laughs> And you see, there's the rub, because very often that does not happen, okay? We ask, well, we think we ask one thing. Our horse hears something completely different and gives us something else. And then we double down on our efforts, training our horse to do the thing that we asked initially. But meanwhile, we rarely stop to consider that potentially we have not asked either the correct question or asked it the right way to begin with. Now, your thoughts, your legs, your hands, your body language, your voice, your position, your seat, your weight, these are just some of your natural aids that you use. So it makes sense that when we're asking questions, we're going to use those with some of your artificial aids. So it could be the saddle, the bridle, the whip, the spurs, the arena. There's loads of artificial aids as well, okay? There's always this combination that we use of natural and artificial aids in order to get the message across to the horse, okay? Now, the challenge becomes, as riders, when we lack control over our own actions, and our actions then become a little eh, muddled, sloppy, okay? They're not clear, they're not well thought out, they're not concise, and then the message gets muddied. The horse just cannot see or hear or understand the message that we are trying to communicate, okay? Now, what I want you to start thinking about is how, yes, we can talk all the things about retraining. So I mentioned there that sometimes you say something, your horse hears something else. That can be a retraining issue. I'm I'm not denying that. But what I want to talk about now is training. And training riders and horses is equally as important but I feel that as a rider it is up to you it's your responsibility to make sure that you are you have a plan a program to train yourself okay and it's not yes you can go to the lessons and you can go to the trainer but at the end of the day there's also things that you need to do off the horse to help you to really and truly move forward in your knowledge and in what happens and that you can then take that for the next time you do get into the saddle and you can make more of it. There's a really common misconception around horse riding that as riders we control our horses and (laughs) if you've been riding for any length of time you've just laughed with me now and you're like oh please. (laughs) if only because at the end of the day how can you control something with a mind of its own but what is true is that we can influence our horses we're influencing them all the time but I feel that effectiveness as a rider comes down to having more positive influence over our horse and we do that by controlling the things we can control like ourselves okay so that's really important to understand I think that developing self-control as a rider is really really important and a lot of people think self-control when it comes to riding is just a physical thing that is important it's a part of it okay I'm not saying it's not but I also think there has to be a mental and an emotional development that goes hand in hand with that so I think this is true for your horse as well when you're developing your horse and you're training your horse there has to be a physical a mental and an emotional element to the training and this is goes with every principle you work on you have to cover all three if there's a weak spot it will show up later so I want you to consider that in your riding and if we think about even something like coordination and people will say no but coordination is just physical I don't know I think coordination is actually developed over time and it's developed through you really and truly focusing and getting intentional on developing your physical strength yes 
focused and intentional thinking and then also building emotional confidence okay emotional resiliency within yourself as well as a rider and I think how if we could kind of think about riding the way it shows up is like being able to respond rather than react every time something happens okay I think that if you could really and truly begin to gauge um okay so when I ask a question does my horse really understand what I'm asking or you know maybe it maybe I didn't ask that as well as I could have. Okay, going forward, how could I improve asking that question? And then from there, beginning to develop that every single time. You have to take responsibility for the work. I think that it's actually ridiculous to say as a rider that you're finished, that like you've completed your training. (laughs) like there's some like ding ding magic door you got through it well done you are now a rider that's not going to happen you're all the time just like this evolution of you as a rider that has to take place and if you're not actively developing that and you're not actively looking for ways to grow and to become better in your communication skills with your horse well, then you're just stagnant. You are not going to continue to move forward. And most likely, you'll actually begin going backwards. This happens so often for riders. They, they fail to continue to learn and to develop their skills. So all that being said and done, I'm going to invite you to begin thinking about your riding. What could you do this coming month to help you begin to develop yourself further? Could it be physically adding some sort of cross training into your weekly routine? And I know time is tight for a lot of people and I realize that, but you know, I think there's, you can have priorities and that means maybe saying no to other things. If you, if you're choosing to make this a priority, it may mean that you have to say no to something else, but do it for a month and see how it goes. It could be that you're going to read up or to, to watch videos or to learn, to attain maybe some training regarding a certain topic that, you know, you'd like to go deeper into. You feel that, hmm, you know, I, I wouldn't be that great there. And doing that, taking the time to go deeper onto that topic, okay, into it. And then it also is about the mindset work. If you're still thinking the same things you were thinking last year when you were riding, this time last year, you have not grown as a rider. You have to constantly think new things. You have to question things, question ideas. And I'm not saying you have to change everything you do all the time. That's not at all. But you do have to evolve. You'll always have this point in riding where you'll find that something will no longer serve you and there's something else that you need to pick up there's a letting down and a picking up of something new and it's really important to keep thinking about that in your riding going forward okay all this being said and done i am starting the fit for riding fit for life plan for february 2022 it's absolutely free if you want to join me this is an old plan it was an old program i had um, but if you want to join me you're more than welcome to do so go over to fitforriding.com forward slash go and all the details are there and you can join me on the plan for this month going forward okay i hope you have a wonderful day keep well and i'll chat to you soon be good bye Okay, so there you have it. I've given you your marching orders. I do hope that you're going to join me. And just remember that the link is equestrianfitnesschallenge.com. Wherever you're listening to this right now, if you just scroll down, you will have a link right there. You can sign up right now on your phone. It's right there. Okay, there's no need to do anything else. There's no need to do anything fancy. Just put your name, put your email address, and then make sure that you look for the email from me to confirm your email address, okay? That's really important. Um, I know some people are not looking for those emails. They're not confirming. I can't send you the challenge if you don't confirm your email address. So I have to stress, it's really, really, really important that you go into your inbox immediately after 
putting in your details. You find that email. It may be in your junk mail, but you do need to confirm in order for me to send you the challenge. Otherwise, I can't send it to you, okay? So just make sure you're doing that as well. I'm so excited. It's like all things walking. It's all things yogaing. It's all things horsing. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be a barrel of laughs. I just know it will. Can't wait. See you there. EquestrianFitnessChallenge.com. I'll chat to you soon. Be good. Bye.